Hey there, YouTube. Super Brain AK here. And well, I'm working on a project that I'm kind of been thinking about for quite a while, which is kind of linking and upgrading my sort of speakers and uh, media computer. I don't have a media computer and first step was putting the monitor on the pole which you can see there done that but now I want to make my subwoofer be a lot louder and also it only has a physical power switch uh, so I wanted to add in a remote switch so that way I can turn it on and off from my big stereo. That way it can be controlled remotely from um, infrared remote instead of me reaching over and switching it on and remembering to switch it off. So I've taken it apart opened it up mostly and that's the circuit board in there you can see the two big uh, filter capacitors those are 71 volts actually haven't measured the uh, rectified output voltage but that's pretty high just for a mono subwoofer amplifier and that big blue relay there is to switch on and off the subwoofer contacts so that way it doesn't pop and a bunch of blue caps but that's not the board we're interested in today you can see there that um, green and or blue and brown connector with the yellow end that goes to the power switch over on the bench I've got the uh, linear transformer, which, uh, well, gives it power. Got the output here, two big old fuses, which are 6.3 amps rated. But you can see oh, I have made a little modification to it. I've put on a little relay. Little relay, yeah, it's about like five amps. On the main side, that's where the main plug's in, and that's where the power switch connector goes. And input fuse, four amp. Uh, so I just kind of hot glued it to there and uh, well, I soldered all this up before I connected on the board. Let's zoom in, shall we? See a little more detail. There we go. So I've got a, f a diode here pointing up so that way when you have the positive on here and the negative on there, when you switch it off, the inductance of the coil, because it's got a lot of turns, it's got really high inductance, it'll cause a voltage spike. So the diode clamps that. So I've got that connected to a little, little white connector. I don't know, BNC, not BNC, JST, which goes on this little cable which goes on to a little mono um, RCA jack and that I'm going to be putting oh, somewhere in the back like up next to the the audio input so I'll probably have to drill a hole but that's fine because um, 
uh, it's all isolated and sealed from the subwoofer part behind the uh, wood there. This is all open to the um, open to the air. That's why it can use its fan to uh, ventilate. So yeah, and then all I did was take two wires from the switching contacts, bring them over, and soldered them directly across the switch. So that way, if I don't have the uh, remote on input connected, I can still turn it on with the switch. Now if I wanted to use it manually or do something else with it, it's unaffected. But as soon as I plug this in and give it a 12 volt signal, it should turn on. So that's all hunky dory and wanted to show the show you that before I put it all away. So the next step is going to be modifying my radio, which I've already got kind of taken apart. But what I'm going to be doing is replacing its linear transformer with a um, switch mode transformer. What was this? 12 volt, half an amp, 6 watts. Should be plenty for its standby power and should bring its standby power a lot, a lot lower. Instead of, I don't know, like 3 watts or something. Something pretty crazy. So, yeah, it should be down to like less than 1 watt. And then also, it'll probably beef up the current so that I can add um, different things like the remote sense and maybe even a microcontroller in the future. Because that's another thing that I'm wanting to um, put into it. Because um, its equalizers are pretty standard rock, classical, jazz, hip-hop, flat. That's basically it. I want so much more c control over the equalizer. Which I can definitely do by um, making some sort of I2C, because the sound controller is um, I2C, and um, uh, switch either either have the microcontroller always in series with it, so like it Here's the I2C from the main microcontroller, and then if I have it in um, passive mode, then it'll just go straight through. The microcontroller would just repeat it, or bypass mode, where the microcontroller um, blocks all the signal going to the sound processor from the main microcontroller. So, yeah. I'm not sure uh, how I'm best going to do that, but still gonna try. And this is the first step. Then there's another thing which might be solved just by um, messing with the microcontroller and changing manually changing the sound processor, but the um, subwoofer is not really amplified. It kind of needs a preamp in order to be loud enough. So like um, when I have it plugged into the um, radio that's just coming straight from the sound processor. And when I connected the sound bar it has a subwoofer output which has a subwoofer amplifier. It combines the left and right channel and amplifies it a bit to go to the subwoofer. 
so I need some sort of little amplifier. So, if anybody has some suggestions, I've been looking online, but I don't know. They don't look all too good as sort of a preamp, but I'm sure I'd be best just making something myself, making sure the gain is right, and or just modifying the gain. So, yeah, I'm going to quit rambling, but stay tuned for more future upgrades, like uh, having a uh, uh, Pico PSU inside a Optiplex 390 whose power supply is dead. So, I don't know which Pico PSU I'm going to use yet. I've got a few, but they're kind of expensive, so might be a while. And definitely gonna have a UPS. I've got a, um, what is it, 250 VA um, UPS down there, which I'm gonna modify. Well, just hook up, get some SLAs for it, probably external. And yeah, so without further ado, I'll catch you guys later.